My job is to be your eyes, ears, nose, the five senses. I'm supposed to bring those to you. But if you put the camera down and you kind of look at what it is, it, it can overwhelm you sometimes. The dead bodies, the car crashes, the burning houses. Some things you see in the business, they're for these eyes only. Every day, consumers tune into the news to see what is happening in our world today. The news will air stories that they think have to be told. But what about the stories that aren't? What society doesn't realize is the news actually filters these stories into what we see on the air. They cut the details that wouldn't be safe for an audience. So what exactly does the news cut out? Sometimes you cut out foul language. Sometimes you do a blur. Uh, because maybe someone's inappropriately dressed or makes an inappropriate gesture. Um, and there's times when, uh, you know, video and pictures come back to the station and you're like, make sure you don't use from three minutes to five minutes because there's a, a body laying on the ground. Um, so there are things that we take out um, to make sure that audiences at home are able to digest it so that it doesn't offend anyone. We really don't filter much. I can't think of times that an editor has come to me and said, this is inappropriate to show, don't filter this, don't show this. That really is rare. The only exception and the main exception I can think of are uh, graphic, uh, you know, bloody things. Um, we have at the Indy Star a, for lack of a better word, a, a dead body rule. One of the hazards of the job is you'll see a, a dead body. We don't show blood, we don't show bodies, even though, I mean, they're there. You're covering a murder. There's a dead guy. If there's a dead guy, there has to be a body. What we try to do is to be sensitive to the viewers sitting at home and don't want to show them an image that is too jarring, yet still give them an accurate portrayal of what is going on. What many people don't see is that there are many dangers that go into making a news package. Oftentimes, the public will simply want to see the story and not realize that the photographers and anchors are sometimes even risking their lives just to bring you the story. Really, the dangers that I think of are just the daily wear and tear of carrying gear around. Got a couple cameras here and these cameras maybe 10 pounds, 12 pounds, that sort of thing. There's sometimes some bigger exotic lenses that we use for sporting events. You're bending down, you're standing up, and that sort of thing. So it's really just daily wear and tear of moving a lot of gear around quickly. When you're in news, when everybody else runs away, we run too. Um, whether it's a big fire, whether it's a major tornado or weather event, um, whether it's a huge crash. When people are trying to flee, that's usually where we're trying to go. And I'm standing next to a paramedic that I had met because he worked the same shift, you know, and just kind of chit-chatting in between shots. All of a sudden, I, hit, I, I feel something, you know, it hits me in the back. So he looks at me and he's like, you don't have to be so jumpy. And I was like, well, something hit my back. And he's like, well, lift up your shirt, let me see. So I lift up my shirt, he looks at my back, and then he, and then he goes, you've just been shot. And I'm like, uh, what? <laughs> like, no, no. Long story short, I have a bullet in my back. Being in the news can oftentimes be a very tricky business. You have to be able to report a story, but also tell it in a way that would not upset large portions of society. The news will do many things in order to prepare themselves for stories with a sensitive topic. When it comes to a story that deals with a sensitive topic, whether someone has died um, or something that's that's morbid, you know, for me, I, I make sure that I know the story and that's how I give it to you. My job is not to interpret, but oftentimes based on how I deliver it, you get a, a different feeling about what that story is about, right? Something that's sad is usually a little slower just because uh, as a human, that's how people take those emotions in. We pick up the camera and, and photograph and look through that. And, and in some ways that can kind of isolate us and separate us from that scene. And we'll, we'll use that to, to help kind of get through the job. But, but if you put the camera down and you kind of look at what it is, it, it can overwhelm you sometimes. Telling stories can oftentimes be a very difficult task depending on what you're reporting on. Many times there are some visuals that you wouldn't be able to show to the public, and depending on what news outlet you go to, the story could likely differ. 
pictures are worth a thousand words, right? It's cliche, but it's true. And so um, moving pictures where you can actually get a sense of the timing and, and how things felt are different from pictures, just photographs. And so, um, you know, as a journalist, as a photojournalist, um, the, the guys that I work with, the gals that I work with, they get there, they get the story, they get into the story. And I feel like what it does is it allows the viewer to be involved in a different way. It's about television. So I, without those moving pictures, I got nothing. Television, I go on TV every day at four o'clock. I got to go. Newspapers, if it's not ready today, it'll be ready tomorrow. They'll get to it and they'll add this much you know, more copy to the end of it and they'll just jump it to page A3. Well, you can do that. As a reporter, it is your job to inform the public on what is happening in the world. You have to pull out your emotions and opinions and give the public the facts that they want. But the thing is that society doesn't see the impact a story has on a person. They don't see the emotional toll that goes into bringing them these stories. So as a journalist, you have to be as objective as you can um, and at the same time convey that emotion, right? I think uh, for me, and I've only broken down a couple of times on air, um, but it's because I'm thinking so much about it when I'm giving a story. And so I think what you do is you, you tell that story, you're compassionate, um, and that's another thing I do. I put myself in the place of the people that are there. You're compassionate in your telling, and then you go home and you do whatever you can to fill yourself with positive uh, images. Um, I mean, I, I, all I do is go to comedies. You just file it back. You, how you recover from seeing traumatic things and having tough experiences happen, you just file them back. You recover and you have to have a very strong core of what you believe in, which obviously I do. You believe in ethics, you believe in the morality of it, you believe in doing the right thing, and at my core is you stand up against the bully. You know, you just have to know what you believe in and what you will stand up for. There's some stuff that just stinks, and there's some stuff that is just it's hard to handle, and you're right. I mean, our job is to be out there and to be your five senses, but there's no such thing as smell-o-vision. Um, and there are some places and people and environments where it's just, it's hard to express that in words. So I think that um, it's kind of like you, you give it to somebody straight, but with the chaser. We don't show it to you because you just don't need to see it. Trust us, it's there. The world sucks. If you don't believe us it sucks, go to that neighborhood. Stay there for a little bit and see how much their world sucks. If you don't like that it sucks, do something to change it. You know, we're showing you all the proof that this sucks. You know, do we need to show you all the boring statistics you're gonna glaze over for a lot of things? No. I think the part the public doesn't see is how much all of the journalists, uh, I'm a visual journalist myself, the reporters, um, the editors, the sports folks, how much we care about the community around us, how much we sincerely root for people, root for our common man, root for things to improve. I think that's the part that gets lost on a lot of people is there are certain people who think, oh, they're, they're ghouls. They just want to, they want to go photograph dead bodies and show that and shock people. And, it's it's absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, a lot of people do say, you know, the news, ugh, it's negative, it's, you know, it's always shootings and murders, and, but the truth is, you know, if, if we didn't bring that to you, you, and there was something down the street that happened to you, and you didn't see it on the news, you would turn to somewhere else to try to find it. So it's really, um, it's a responsibility. We try to be good gatekeepers, but we've got to give you the information because it's your right to have it. And that's our job. We're public servants of the information that you need. I didn't really know what exactly to expect when it comes to like everything that you're gonna see. There is no way to like filter that when you're physically there on the scene. You know, the things that I've seen on the scene, you know, I didn't really know, you know, I wasn't really prepared for that, but it's like the things that I see on scene, all the dead bodies, the car crashes, the burning houses, you know, some things you see in the business, they're for these eyes only. The thing to take away is that the news will filter details that our society doesn't need to see. 
the media, whether it's on your TV or on your kitchen table, will bring you stories that you need to see. Journalists will bring you information that isn't biased and brings you up to speed on what's happening in our society. They cut things out because oftentimes they are safer if seen by these eyes only.